what's up guys the anime titan here back at it again with another what if and today i want to say thank you for everything but anyway um yeah i will have a link in the description below to my friend uh blessed's what ifs he is actually a pretty good what if -er, as well as my discord and instagram in the description so go ahead and check those out at discord you can well just basically give me any feedback that you like whether it be a comment saying yeah i don't like your what ifs because of this and this reason or i like your what ifs because of this and this reason it doesn't really matter so anyway uh yeah let's get into it this will be what if naruto was a full bringer part one redo because i absolutely hated part one in my personal opinion so we start out this what if in kumo gakure no sato Naruto would have just been born to a beautiful Uzumaki, one of the one of the last remaining Uzumaki, who had fled to Cloud, seeing as if she was to become a Jinchuriki there, she'd be respected enough, instead of treated like a beast, like a monster. And to one of the, well. I would I wouldn't say noble, but one of the one of the clan one of the major clans in Kumo being the Storm Release well the clan with Storm Release or Black Lightning, Darui's clan. Naruto would have been born with blonde hair, blue eyes, pure white skin, and whisker marks. They had no clue why whisker marks, but the boy had them. Shortly after giving birth, Naruto's mother would hand him a fox pendant. I'll show you the fox pendant in a sec. The fox pendant. She always did love the fox pendant because it reminded her of, well, the mischief her and her best friend would get up to. Her best friend being Kushina Uzumaki. The two of them would always continue making trouble throughout the Whirlpool Village and messing with a lot of people. Whether they knew they'd get in trouble, well, they still would do it. But anyway, she would hand him the pendant, as with her final breath she'd say, Take this pendant, and remember, I love you, Naruto, as she would pass away due to blood loss from giving birth. Six years would then would pass after that, with Naruto's father raising him to the best of his abilities. It wouldn't be Darui, but one of the older clan members. He would raise Naruto, teaching him the basics of survival, meaning Naruto would know cooking, cleaning, hunting, as well as some low-tier lightning jutsu just to get by. He'd also know the transformation, substitution, and, well, the clone, but he couldn't properly get the clone down because of his massive chakra reserves. Naruto, at this point would have so much chakra that his body, body can't contain it all. So it would be letting out small amounts of chakra throughout Naruto's chakra coils at all times. Something nobody noticed, but that's where the necklace would come in play. Naruto's necklace would be absorbing his chakra. Well, the chakra that's radiating off of Naruto's body. This would, Naruto would be the only person that could do this besides the Raikage, seeing as the Raikage forces his chakra around his body, creating his lightning armor or lightning cloak. Naruto would unknowingly be doing the same but with pure normal chakra, and the pendant would be absorbing it, thus meaning it would react to Naruto's chakra at a later stage. Naruto would have been having fun with his father one day when they'd be heading to the shop and his father would get Naruto some dango. They would then head home with Naruto's father telling him, Okay, Naruto, look, uh, Dad's going to have to go on a mission. I shouldn't be away for, for longer than a week, okay? Naruto would look a little sad but would not say, Okay, Dad, be careful, okay? His father would smile as he'd ruffle Naruto's hair, saying, I'm always careful. He'd then go off to pack, and just before leaving, he'd pass Naruto an, uh, something else. This would be a ring. 
Naruto didn't know why, but he would accept the ring wholeheartedly. His father would then tell him, That was my dad's ring. Keep it safe, f- safe for me, eh? Naruto would smile as he'd say, No problem, dad, as his father would go off. Naruto would wait a week and would get worried, seeing as nobody, well, his father hadn't come home yet. He'd think that, oh, the mission is just taking a bit longer than expected, as he'd wait another week. But now he'd get worried. His father had never been away from home more than two weeks. He'd quickly sprint through the compound, looking for his Uncle Darui, as he'd get there and say, Uncle Darui, Uncle Darui, Dad hasn't come home yet. What's going on? Darui would come to the realization that Naruto doesn't know his father's gone. Darui would uh, place his hand on Naruto's shoulder as he'd pick up the boy, putting him on his shoulder, saying, Let's go talk to Uncle B, okay? I think he should be able to explain better. Naruto would look a bit confused but say, Okay, as Darui would be walking through the village. He'd ask them if they knew where B was, and they'd say, yeah, B's at the training ground. Dory would nod as he'd head off to the training ground alongside Naruto. When they'd get there, they'd see B with his, um, well, with Yugito, the two of them doing some light sparring. When, um, Naruto would say, Uncle B, Dad hasn't come home yet, do you know why? Yugito would immediately look to the side as she'd see young, well, a young Naruto and Darui. B would immediately, well, his face would immediately drop to a sad expression, knowing that this little boy had just lost his father. B would then tell Yugito that that's enough of a spot today. I'm not going to do the rapping because I'm not all that, but so. B would head over to Naruto as he'd take him off of Darui's shoulders and say, Okay, Naruto, um, you know the life of a ninja is really hard, right? Naruto would say, yeah, that's why you have to be super careful and super strong to survive. B would then say, yeah, your dad, he, he didn't make it. Naruto's heart would drop as he'd say, no, not possible. Dad was strong. No, not even, nobody could beat Dad, as B would say, yeah, your dad was strong, Naruto, but somebody else was stronger. No, sorry guys for that, uh, it's annoying if you can't breathe through your nose. But anyway, Naruto would fall to the ground, breaking down in tears, as he'd say, Dad promised, he promised me he'd come home, he promised. He'd then grab the necklace that's around his neck as a blinding white light would surround Naruto. The ground beneath him would crack and a force would be exerted, equal to that of half of a tail. Everybody would be shocked, everybody in the training ground that is, would be shocked, wondering where the hell this came from, before the light would then immediately disappear and Naruto would collapse. B would wonder what just happened as Darui would rush over to his, <gasps> sorry, his nephew. He'd immediately grab the boy into a tight hug as he'd say, Naruto, Naruto, are you okay? Naruto, wake up! He would then check the pole to see that Naruto's still alive, just unconscious. He'd take Naruto back home and stay with him till he woke up. Naruto would wake up about four hours later. In this four hours, Darui would have... Well, just been waiting there alongside Naruto, and B would have reported to uh, um, A what had happened. Um, Naru- when Naruto finally woke up, Dori would say, "Hey, Naruto, you okay?" Naruto would uh, hug Dori with tears streaming down his face, saying, "Dad's not coming back. Dad's gone." As Dory would say, I know, Naruto, I'm sorry, but I'm here for you. I'll look after you, don't worry. Naruto would slightly nod his head, but wouldn't stop crying. 
He'd continue crying for at least another hour before there'd be a knock at the door. His, his um, tears and sobs would slowly diminish till it was no more. But it was clearly evident that the boy was crying. When Darwin and Naruto went and opened the door, they'd see A and B. This would be a surprise to, well, both of them. As A would ask Naruto what he did. Naruto would ask A, sorry Raikage-sama, but what do you mean? A would then chuckle slightly as he'd say, <laughs> Don't worry, Naruto. Calling me A is just fine. Okay, Uncle A, but what do you mean? Um, A would then say, B tells me that you did something in the training ground. You let out a large amount of chakra and a blinding light. Do you know what that was? Naruto would shake his head saying, no. I just remember feeling really sad and then holding on to mom's necklace. The necklace with the ring. A would then uh, look at Naruto as he'd say, Okay, Naruto, but could you try channeling some chakra to the ring? Naruto would nod as he'd channel some chakra chakra to the ring. And... (coughs) Sorry. (coughs) (coughs) Sorry, you guys, that was... Oh, it was heavy. But anyway, um... A golden light would envelop Naruto... The golden, sorry, the golden light would look like, well, tiny golden flames pouring off of Naruto's body. A and B would wonder if this is a KK Genkai or a special seal that was placed on the necklace. As Naruto would then say, is is, is this what you were talking about? Before he'd, well, it would disappear and he'd almost fall over forward. A and B would look at Naruto as they'd both realize that this must drain a, la- a large amount of chakra for such a small child. A would then say, Okay, Naruto, that's a pretty strong technique. So I'm gonna have your uncle Darui and B here train you so that you can learn to use it properly, okay? Naruto would nod as he'd say, Um, Uncle A, could I ask you something? A would nod as he'd say, what is it, Naruto? Naruto would then ask, who was it that killed my father? A would, well, immediately go dark in it, go dark. A's face would immediately go dark as he'd say, it was Kisame, Kisame Hoshigaki. Naruto would nod as he'd say, I'll make sure. Kisame never survives again. So, Naruto would be six. So, he'd be training with Killer B for the next two years. Well, Killer B and Darui. In these, in the next two years, Naruto would have gotten down some basics of the Black Lightning, as well as Sword Style, Chakra Control, and some more Lightning Jutsu. Naruto's elements in this are Wind and Lightning which give him the perfect combination of swift release, but he won't be getting that. So anyway, Naruto would have gotten down some basic lightning jutsu, such as the... Give me a second. The basic lightning jutsu Naruto would have learned was limelight, as well as... um. Hang on, give me a second, which one... The Lightning Shuriken, Lightning Clone, Spiderweb, and Thunderbolt. As well as Lightning Cable, because why not? He'd also learn some... Well, of He'd learn the same techniques, but with Black Lightning, which would basically make A and... Well, hang on. That would have made A, B, and Darui extremely surprised. That this boy was able to use those... In the Black Lightning affinity as well. Naruto would eventually, at the age of seven, he would have picked up a sword and started his base the basics of Kenjutsu, seeing as Kenjutsu is a damn it's it's like one of the requirements in Kumo. Like how many people do you see in Kumo Gakure running around with swords, bruh? 
so anyway, Naruto would be, um, doing sword training with Killer B up until the age of eight. B would have helped him as well as Doroi with Naruto being able to do a lot of the basic jutsu, including some of the basic academy jutsu. Naruto would inevitably enter the academy where he'd meet Kamu, uh, meet um, Karui and Omui. Those two would constantly be nagging and well, not nagging, but Karui would constantly be nagging Omui, seeing as the two were friends, childhood friends. Naruto would say hi to um, Samui. As he walks by, seeing as Samui, I think Samui is part of Darui's clan because it, it looks like Samui is Darui's little brother. But anyway, yeah, yeah. So he would wave to Samui as he walks past, with Samui actually smiling and waving back. This would not um, slip Karui's attention as she'd ask, Who the hell was that? Karui, uh, Karui would then say, That's my nephew, I think. Not my nephew, that's my cousin. As this would, well, shock Karui. She'd say, that's your cousin? No way he's your cousin. He's too not lazy. Karui would look at her in a annoyed, t um, in the, in the, well, with an annoyed face as he'd say, what's that supposed to mean? She'd say, look at him. He actually looks like he practices. Karui, well, someone would then say, yeah, that's because he wants to kill Kisame Hoshigaki. Karui would then ask, why the hell would he want to kill Kisame Hoshigaki? Naruto would hear this as he'd say, because he killed my father. This would basically shut up everybody in the class, hearing that this boy already had his sights set on murder. The um, teacher would then walk in as he'd do his usual, well, a teacher would do his usual shtick. History, that and that and that. When it came to the physical portion, Naruto aced it with ease. A 10 out of 10 shuriken... Taijutsu was, well, on point, and he had the best endurance out of all of them. He even had base, the basics of Kenjutsu down. Naruto wouldn't be a slouch in the, um, well, mental department either, so he'd do pretty well in school. At the age of 12, he'd be put on Team Samui, with Samui and Karui, under B. The three of them would do regular training. Give me a second would be doing regular training together for the next two months, seeing as Kumo's Academy actually ends up um, finishing a lot earlier than the Hidden Leafs. So for the next two months, they'd be doing d rank missions around the village as well as constantly training. With Naruto finally having, well, basic control over his full brain, which Karui and Samui, not Omui, sorry, I kind of screwed that up in the first bit, but... Um, Beach Curry and Samui had noticed. They'd seen him use it once or twice and were intrigued. Flashback to when they asked about it. Hey, Naruto, what's that weird golden thing you do? Was the question coming from, well, Samui, as he and Curry were walking up to Naruto. Naruto would say, well, I'm not really sure and neither is the Raikage, B or Uncle... Well, not uncle, I think it's uh, Darui. Because, like, if those two are, if Samui and Darui are related, that means Darui is Naruto's older cousin. But whatever. So anyway, Naruto would then explain, I can basically channel some chakra into my necklace and it'll do something. The two of them would be intrigued as some, well, Karui would then ask, would you mind showing us? Naruto would uh, nod his head slightly as he'd channel some chakra to the fox pendant. Out of nowhere, he'd be surrounded in a golden cloak of chakra. Not like when I mean a cloak, I mean an actual cloak. Like a long sleeve jacket with a... Maybe, basically, just search up cloak. It's the best way you're going to find it. He'd be surrounded in a golden cloak. But instead of everything being attached at the bottom, there would be nine... Well, different streaks, each having a weird black marking in them. Which from confused um, Karui and Samui, as Naruto would also basically have a rough-edged blade.
bit of pure chakra. The blade wouldn't be all too strong at this point, but it would be strong enough to hold its own against, well, the beginners in Kenjutsu. Flashback End Naruto would have eventually grown tired of the D-rank missions alongside Karui and Samui, as with this time when they'd enter the Raikage's office, they'd ask for a bit of a better mission. A would chuckle slightly as he'd say, Sure, why not? We've had a bit, we ha we've had a request from the mist to hunt down the missing nin. Well, we had a request from the mist to help them out with some problems that's within their area. B would raise his eye as he asks, Yo, what do you mean, A? As A would then reply with, Gato has been causing a bit of trouble in Wave, and it's your job to eliminate him. He, the in basic intel says that he should be surrounded by bandits only, so you shouldn't really have to worry about any massive problems. B would nod as he'd accept the mission scroll and tell them to go pack for a extended mission period. The, uh, the squad would nod as they disappear, all except for Naruto, who would then say, Um, Uncle A, the... The chakra manipulation that comes from my pendant, it's feeling off. I would ask what he meant as Naruto would say, well, it feels incomplete, like it still needs time to adapt. I'm not sure what's going on, but the chakra doesn't feel whole. A would then reply with, well, there's nothing we can do about it, seeing as this is something entirely new. So we'll, you just have to go off of instinct for the time being. Naruto would nod as he himself would then disappear, heading home. He'd, well, basically have some basic knowledge of sealing jutsu, seeing as he is partial of, uh, part of the Usumaki clan due to the large amount of chakra that he has, and his mother being an Usumaki. So, um, A would have had, so that he would at least get some basic sealing, um, training done in the past two years and a couple months as well, so Naruto can now create the basic explosive tags and sealing scrolls. Naruto would have basically, how do I put it? You know how you, uh, with a backpack that you can zip open? Yeah, Naruto would have a backpack, but instead of it zipping open, it would be almost like a suitcase that could flip completely open. So Naruto would have a backpack that was like a suitcase with a uh, scroll stored in a specific part. Okay, no, you know what? Never mind. Naruto would have a backpack with specific pouches for scrolls. He doesn't carry anything in the backpack besides scrolls. Easiest way to put it at the moment. He would have sealed up some provisions as well as his sleeping bag, two extra sleeping bags, seeing as his father had planned for him, his mother, and Naruto to go camping at some point. Naruto had packed those as well as some more uh, ninja tools and a secondary, well, two extra pouches, being one ninja tool and one medical. Yeah, that's another thing I forgot to mention. Just like in my other what ifs, Naruto carries two pouches. Yeah, two pouches. One with medical supplies, the other with ninja. So Naruto would be all set as he would then um, head off to the living room and grab the katana that was near the door. So he'd grab it and exit, heading to the gate. There he'd find Samui and um, Ka Karui already waiting with uh, their sensei. Naruto would, would bow down saying, Sorry I'm late, as B would just say, Yo, Naruto, it's fine, let's go. So they would all walk off, and Naruto would end up, well... Just chatting with his team for the next, I don't know, week, weeks worth of travel. They would have made it there in the week and would have heard, as they entered Wave, would have heard a bunch of clanging and clashing. This would have confused them as they'd step through to see Kakashi Hatake with a team of Genin fighting what seems to be Zabuza, Momuchi of the Hidden Mist. B would then consider, well, wouldn't mind as he'd jump in, 
Seeing as he does want to fight a legendary one of the legendary seven swordsmen of the mist. He jump in telling Kakashi that I'll uh step in for the time being, you take a break. I really want to fight this guy if you don't mind. Kakashi would nod as B would then step in using his uh seven sword style, I think. To take on Zabuza. Zabuza would be well actually quite intrigued and having be having quite a lot of fun with the battle between him and B. B would be slashing, cutting, flipping and being basically everywhere with Zabuza having to block and sustaining cuts here and there. That's when out of nowhere a hunter nin would shoot Senbon to well into uh give me a second Fuck. A hunter nin would shoot two Senbon into the neck of Zabuza seemingly killing him. He then thanked them for their help and disappear. Ooh. We would then look at Kakashi and ask, So, why were you fighting Sabuza Momochi? Um, Kakashi would then say he was hired by Gato to stop us from, well, taking out the, well, from delivering the bridge builder back to his home and helping him finish his bridge. B would then smile saying, Okay, looks like we're gonna be Helping you on your mission. Seeing as our mission was to take out Gato. Kakashi would nod. As he'd ask um, Tazuna to send them. Well to take team 7 to his house. B would then take his team to a nearby hotel. As they would sign in. The team would basically be happy. And would have mind you basic chakra control by this time. Seeing as they did train with B for 2 months. So tree walking and water walking is what they have done. Naruto has a bit more advanced chakra control seeing as B had him feed chakra through wires that were attached to his fingers to ensure that he could control the chakra. The chakra would be fed through the wires at a, con a steady pace. Too much at a time would cause the wires to burn red hot. Not enough and they basically the chakra would never reach the other end. So Naruto has at least mid tuning level chakra control. So anyway, the next day would roll around and Kakashi would start teaching his team. With B basically having his team spa after meeting up with Kakashi at the bridge. Naruto and um, Kuroi would be sparring in Kenjutsu with Sasuke actually taking an interest in Kamui, uh, Kuroi. Seeing as she was a kunoichi that wasn't fangirling. This would have ticked off Sakura as she would stomp over to Kuroi saying, Hey, how dare you act cool in front of my Sasuke-kun. Sasuke is only allowed to love me, nobody else. Kuroi would then look at her and say, I don't give a damn about your Sasuke-kun. I've already got my eyes set on somebody. This would intrigue Sasuke as well as Naruto and Samui as Samui would sneak up asking, Who is it? He would immediately be met with a punch to the stomach, sending him reeling over. Naruto would have immediately jumped back as Kuro would say, Okay, you heard what Sensei said. You need to practice your technique. So let's head off into the forest and you can try using your blade against mine. Naruto would nod as the two would disappear into the forest, leaving Samui just rolling in agony. The two would appear in a training room, in a open area in the middle of the forest where the two would go at it. Naruto would unleash his full bring. The well, I can't say QB cloak. So Kitsune's protection basically. Cause I don't know. But anyway, um yeah. He would use his golden rigid and un well chakra katana to slash against Karui as she would be doing the same with her regular katana. The two would constantly be fighting and fighting up until Karui strikes really hard onto um, Naruto's chakra katana. But what they didn't expect was it snapped. The katana broke off and Karui's blade continued straight on towards Naruto's shoulder. I mean, she was jumping down at him to cut and didn't expect this to happen, so she doesn't have a means of stopping. But that's when something else would happen. The chakra influx that was sent to the pendant 
would out of nowhere increase and it would shift. The cloak would have a bit more of a solid form this time. Actually um encompassing Naruto's body into a sleek protective design being well black and gold. Give me a second guys and pop. I'm pretty sure most, if not all of you, who are watching this have seen Ichigo's Fullbring. So basically just imagine this Ichigo's Fullbring without the part here near the face that wouldn't exist. Just imagine the black still being, well, the black being gold and the white being black. So basically, give me a second. Yeah, basically like this, only the black is gold and the white is black. But it would still be, this is still not Naruto's final form. So anyway, Naruto would be surprised, wondering what the hell was happening. Same with Karui, as Naruto would then inevitably end up collapsing due to the massive amount of chakra that he had ended up, ended up outputting. Karui would be extremely, well, shocked and worried, wondering what the hell she had just done. Did she break Naruto, the boy that she had a bit of a crush on at this point? She would then immediately sprint off uh, towards the um towards a team where her cap her sensei was, and as soon as she'd arrive, arrive. B would look at her and ask, "What's going on?" She'd say, "Naruto, collapsed, new form." B would immediately take action as he'd sprint um back into the forest, looking for Naruto, but he wouldn't be able to find him. Samui had also forgotten the path that she had taken to get here, and thus, Naruto would be lost for the time being. They would let out a search party, well, they wouldn't let out a search party, but we would make a bunch of clones, being lightning clones, that would spread out through the forest looking for Naruto, but each of them with no luck. Naruto would eventually wake up four hours later wondering what happened, as he realized that something must have happened with his ability again that would cause him to be knocked out. Naruto would meet Haku yet again, as Haku had, well, seen Naruto and was trying to kill him before Naruto had waken up. Naruto would see Haku and smile, saying, Hi, um, do you know where I am? Haku would reply with, Oh, you're, uh, in the forest. <laughs> you must have passed out due to training, I think? Naruto would smile, saying, Yeah, I guess. Anyway, uh, why are you doing here? What are you doing here? Haku would reply with, she's just here to pick some medicinal herbs for her friend. As Naruto would smile saying, okay, well, anyway, I hope your friend gets better real soon. I know how important it is to protect your precious people and I never want to lose mine. So I hope he gets better, Naruto would say before getting up and running off. Haku would smile seeing that, well, Naruto already understood the purpose of precious people. Naruto would ev eventually make it back to the hotel with B well, and Karui jumping Naruto. Karui would, the, would have been the first to jump Naruto, hugging him into a basically death grip, ensuring that he was actually Naruto and not an imposter. B would then join in, giving a seemingly even tighter bone-crushing hug, which Naruto would have to substitute out of. He substituted just in time before um, the hug increased even more, causing B and Kurui to crush a chair between their, well, hugs. Naruto would um, be panting a bit, seeing as he was still hurt and had just used what little bit of chakra he had left. Kurui would then immediately run over to Naruto, hugging him again, this time just lighter. As uh, she'd say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have left you and I shouldn't have attacked you that hard. It's because of me that you had to that you were lost in the forest and I, I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry, Naruto, please forgive me. Naruto would say it's fine, he understands, and he is actually happy that she used that attack. Because now his abilities reached its next stage. This would have confused B as Naruto would use it. This time use chakra con because it didn't just transform, it's taking less chakra. B would see the armored resolve as well as the blade, and he would smile.
This is where I'll be leaving it off, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Anime Titan signing out. Peace.